Hi, I'm Chrissy Neen, and I'm coming to you from the lands of the Yagra and Turrbal people. I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land and sovereignty was never ceded. I'm reading today from my collection, uh, Eating My Grandmother, A Grief Cycle. The carpet is an underfoot irritation. The bedspread, nauseous. Peering up each day at a cliche of dolphins leaping from their printed waves. We are near the ocean. Beyond the frosted window, I watch the empty car park, but for a utility parked at an awkward angle. Beyond, a scant town sucks the last from a poisoned land. Cars rust. Plumbing crunches over with salt. There is no sound of ocean, but the crow flies there more easily than four-wheel drives, scraping airless hours down a potholed strip of dirt to drip their tyres in water. This motel waits for decay, to dig over into retro chic, rotted linoleum stylish at a squint, hugs the crusted basin. I squint, not for the linoleum. The cloud puffs up as I pour her body, decanting part of her into a vessel, clear, watertight, half-priced from Bunnings. Keepsake, her burned and ground up bones, her gritty breath, her dehydrated blood, for keep's sake. What part of her have I secreted away? Her hand, which struck out to show affection, eschewing hugs for slaps. Her legs, which she was proud of, admired in tiny shorts till she was 85. Perhaps I have the ground up thigh bone, knee, ankle, skull, mind sharp as a splintered glass, eyes, tattooist needle. I have her fingerprint on me in hot black ink. Breath shudders in, wetted by unshed tears, acidic, a chemical sting at the back of my throat. This is not the taste of human flesh. I wonder in that breath if I am holding a plastic vial of air freshener, toilet cleaner, a potpourri of chemical equations. I wonder if one taste will harm. I wonder about death for the first true time. I know death in the abstract. I have followed a slippery eel of consciousness, tracked its path onward into death, the earth, another living thing. Here now, this acrid taste of death is something else. This granular piece of her, good for nothing more than cat piss, or to gravel line the bottom of aquariums, sanitised with poison, fish floating, belly lolling. She might kill me if I ate her, tiny stone by stone. I pick a fragment of my grandmother. Balanced, I swallow without thought, or taste, I wait to see my death. When she dies, I die. This simple sum, one thing equal to another, A equals B, because I have always believed it to be so. When she dies, equals I die. Because it is only her indomitable will holding the world in place. When she dies, I die, and yet here I am, they tell me she is dead, and here I am, undead, numb, heavy. Yes, the world has stopped, or I have stopped. Like a chicken running around a yard, still trying to escape the fallen cleaver, I am upright. Perhaps A does not equal B. Or I am dead, as Jules Cotard. My feet reek, my cunt is fragrant with decay or dying. I take another grain and put it on my tongue and swallow. I must save some of her. I must bury some of her for mother, aunt, for my mother, aunt, for their loss, which is my loss. I will die from this blood sacrifice falling on the death pyre of my queen. I am already dead. I feel the scratch of her fingernail tracking my trachea. This weight of chemical gravel is not all of her. And what I take is part of part. But I will eat what I have been given. 
I will eat my grief into a stone that will stick in my gut when I have feasted on what remains of remains, then what? <laughs>